Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for creatives. So if you watch this channel often, you'll know that I work with both uh, film and digital for my photography work. I've been shooting with uh, digital quite a bit this year for about the past two months now. And that's kind of inspired me to make this video just to share some of the like different techniques, tools, plugins that I use that I found uh, really helpful and also like really straightforward just for helping me match the images I shoot on digital with the stuff shot on film. So before we jump into it, I do just wanna say very quickly that, you know, in my opinion, regardless of uh, film or digital, whichever medium you use, I think what's gonna have the biggest impact on your work is just your creative style. It's something that develops naturally over time. And I think regardless of which medium you use, it's always something that's going to be apparent because it's just usually what kind of guides you in the decisions you make when you're shaping an image in post-processing. And, you know, I notice it with the black and white work that I've shot on this Fuji when I compare it to the uh, film work I've been doing in Wales. The images look so incredibly similar because, you know, when it's one image in front of me, regardless of what it's shot on, I'm still just making adjustments in Lightroom until it looks a certain way that is pleasing to me. But uh, obviously, you know, both mediums differ in terms of the approach you take to get there. Film has these characteristics built in, like grain and contrast, and obviously using older lenses. Uh, digital, I view as this like incredibly clean slate where you have to go and then build in those characteristics yourself. And uh, that's what we're gonna look at today. So I have five different uh, tools and techniques that uh, I use to kind of bring some of that character back in and also bring a look into digital work. So uh, let's jump on the computer and uh, take a look at the first one. Okay, so almost all these are gonna be about post-processing except for this first one, uh, and that is talking about black Promis filters. I'm sure all of you know what these are. You're probably sick of hearing about them, but you know, they are a really valuable tool, so they're worth mentioning. Um, I did a whole video about these. I'll link uh, somewhere on the screen if you aren't uh, familiar with black Promis, but basically I own two strengths. So I own a quarter and an eighth. I almost always use the eighth. I like just a really subtle effect, and I'll show you. Uh, why? So this image here, this was a GFX 50R with the 45 or 63 mil. And if we zoom into 100%, this is with an eighth black promise. You can see that this um, like high contrast edge here is just blooming a little bit, just really slightly. And if we jump to a couple shots uh, that were done using film, so this is Portra 400, 67. You can see these kind of bright highlight areas show a little bit of that, also some halation. Same with this one. So this is uh, 35 mil. You can see kind of this bright edge here where these specular highlights are and stuff. You're getting a little bit of that bloom. And then even on this one here, we'll zoom out for a sec. So this is, uh, I think this is Pro 400H Fuji. And you can see like these specular highlights are just blooming a little bit. Even some of this like garage door here where this kind of like um, aluminum or chrome is. It has a similar effect. So uh, I find that that the eighth strength is just subtle enough. Uh, so this is another one with the uh, Fuji. You can see here, it's just a really subtle, like slight bloom on these bright highlight, kind of high contrast areas. And I, I find it does a really nice job kind of, kind of mimicking that, uh, that same look that's happening when you're shooting with film. But of course, it all depends on kind of the scenario you're shooting, what your preferences are. So this, this is actually an image from an upcoming video. This is no Promis filter. And then this is with an eighth. So you can see that it's quite a bit more pronounced when you have these like uh, hard light sources in the frame. This is a little bit too much for me. Some people might like this. So these are situations where I wish there was even like a 16th in the screw on size, because that's what uh, I would probably roll with. But definitely a useful tool. I almost always leave the uh, eighth strength on uh, when I'm using newer optics. Okay, so up next is talking about uh, profiles. Gonna have two sections. The first one is talking about Fuji film profiles. Obviously, if you don't shoot with the Fuji, you can't use these, unfortunately, but they are my go-tos and what I enjoy the most. So I wanna touch on them quickly. Uh, there's three in particular, Classic Chrome, was kind of my go-to in the past. I really enjoyed it. I did a video about it uh, showing how I edit my X100 images. I'll link to that. Uh, but this is Portra 400 right here. And this is an X100 uh, using the Classic Chrome profile here in Lightroom. 
and then just making some tweaks. So check that video out if you're curious uh, about that. But I wanted to, to show kind of two new ones I've been playing with. The first one is Classic Negative. Uh, so this is just Adobe Color. This is Classic Negative. This is available on some of the newer Fuji cameras. Uh, I think Fuji has done a great job uh, mimicking that look of like older Fuji film lab scanned images, you know, high contrast with these like kind of purpley highlights and stuff. Uh, it's a little too harsh for my likings, but I like this as a base. So I tweaked it a bit and made my Kyle modified version. So this is it just, you know, toning down the contrast a bit, taking some of that purple out of the highlights. So this is the original and this is mine. So this isn't to replace theirs. I think it's a fun one that could be used in a lot of situations, but uh, this is just kind of taking advantage of some of the things I like about it. And uh, I'll put this preset below. If you want to download it for free, go ahead if you enjoy it. So this is another one. This is classic neg. You can see it is quite harsh. And this is my modified version. Same thing, so a high contrast scenario is I find it's really hard, like too harsh for my likings. But this is my modified version. So just shadows opened up a bit, um, toning down the contrast a bit and tweaking a few of the colors and I, I quite enjoy it. Okay, next up is using Acros. So again, I uh, really enjoy uh, Fuji's Acros profile. I figure, you know, if I'm gonna use profiles, I might as well use them from the camera manufacturer that made film for years. They're probably ones to trust. Uh, so this is my modified version. So I took Acros, just toned down the contrast a little bit and raised the white and black points. And this is theirs. So I actually don't mind theirs, but I personally like a little bit of like a lower contrast black and white image. So again, this is theirs. This is just a, a standard image with Acros applied. And this is my modified version. Just a little, toned down a little bit. You can see in this high contrast scene, the regular Acros is pretty contrasty. And this is my modified version. So the version I did just uses their profiles. It's just the tweaks are in the tone curve and some of the exposure settings. So you can still go in and pick, you know, the different filtered profiles and all the other settings will still remain. So yeah, I've been enjoying this one quite a bit. One more example here. So this is theirs and this is mine. So. Check them out if you want. The links will be below if you want to download them for free and then they just are here. Fujifilm Acros cam version and class of classic negative. Okay, so next up we are gonna check out uh, some profiles for just any camera that you're using. Uh, before we do that though, as always, just gonna quickly take a second here to talk about the uh, sponsor for today's video, which is Squarespace. So I've been using Squarespace for a number of years now and as a photographer, I really like just the flexibility and ease of use with the portfolio galleries, being able to just drag in images and reorder them really easy. But I also like the fact that they have a wide range of templates to choose from so I can go and build out uh, websites for other creative purposes as well like I did with my podcast, The Contact Sheet. Okay, so check out squarespace.com for your free trial, test it out, and when you're ready to launch, you can use the code squarespace.com slash Kyle McDougall to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Uh, okay, let's jump into these next profiles. Okay, so this is a profile pack that uh, I was actually sent a couple of years ago. They haven't paid me uh, or sponsored this video or anything like that. Um, like I said, they sent it to me and I actually didn't use it up until uh, a couple months ago because I wasn't shooting much digital, but this is by a, a company called Archetype Process uh, and they make uh, these packs. So they have Fuji and Kodak and they're these profiles and there's all sorts of film stocks uh, with different scanners and different exposure settings. This might be a benefit to people. It's one of the things that I actually dislike most about proset, uh, profile and preset packs is it's just like overwhelming the amount of options. I find I just end up using uh, one color and one black and white. Uh, but out of the ones that I've tried from different manufacturers, uh, these are the ones that I've enjoyed the most. So again, this is uh, Portra 400 film here. This is just the standard X100 image. And if we go down to uh, Portra 400 Noritsu normal exposure, that's the one that I end up using the most. You can see it always still needs tweaks but it's actually not uh, not too bad. Same thing here. So we'll go back down to 
Uh, that's Frontier, so Noritsu Normal. They are quite heavy in some scenarios. I find they're a little too heavy, especially with the black and white ones, and I actually go and just decrease the image contrast. But this will just be different for everyone. Um, I still prefer the Fuji profiles. I just like kind of like a neutral, like not heavy starting point. Even when I shoot film, I like Portrait 400 and HP5 for those reasons. It's just a very flexible uh, base to work off of. But if you are looking into film profiles and presets, I would say these are definitely worth checking out. There are a lot of options, and I know that uh, there are a bunch of people out there who are quite happy working with them. But I haven't used them enough to truly um, give like a in-depth opinion on them. All I know is uh, they seem to work pretty good, and uh, you know I find sometimes film presets just give this like crazy look. So uh, this is their Ilford HP5 profile which I've quite enjoyed. This is it uh, again, and then this is it compared to my like Acros one. It's a little bit heavier. And I find even with uh, this black and white one, you can see I'm pulling like back, you know, minus 30 on the contrast. So they are still quite heavy presets and uh, it, it certainly gives a look. So that's gonna come down to what you prefer uh, with, your, uh, with your editing as a starting point. Okay, so up next is something that's in Photoshop, but this brings us back to that, like the, the highlights, the blooming, the halation. And I'll show you, we'll jump in Photoshop, I'll, I'll show you how it's done. I'm not gonna do like a step-by-step -step walkthrough um, just because I didn't come up with this and I don't wanna take credit for it. So I'll link below to the, uh, the person's website, the instructions that I followed. So here's my folder here, but basically what you do is you go into Photoshop and you make these, uh, these threshold layers where you kind of like, just pinpoint the extreme highlights. And then you add a, a Gaussian blur, you change the uh, screen mode and you add uh, this color layer. All things that I had no idea what I was doing, but it's super straightforward to just follow these instructions. So you basically end up with these settings. I usually just throw them into a folder and we'll turn it on here. This is dialed way back to like 40%, so I'll max it out. You can change the intensity of this based on you know, the blur amount and, and things. Again, it'll tell you all this in the uh, walkthrough, but as you can see, so these high contrast edges now, again, this is really heavy, but if we tone it back, it just adds this like, you can add this subtle little halation effect. Same with over here, if we look at some of these things, so that's on, that's off, back on again. And you can, you know, however much you want or don't want, you can dial that in. But it is a cool way, again, just to add this like subtle effect uh, to some of these highlight areas uh, that helps kind of mimic the response you see when using film. So link below, check it out, super straightforward, and it's a fun one to play around with. Okay, and the last thing I wanna talk about is grain. And this is a huge one for me, and I feel like this is one of the most important, uh, especially nowadays with just uh, like sensor technology and how clean the files are coming out of digital cameras. So uh, for example, this is back to the uh, GFX 50R. You can see it's just like so smooth and so clean. There's like zero noise, obviously uh, just lacking like any kind of texture at all. Very, very clean. Obviously for some people's work, this is important, but if we're trying to, you know, match this up with film, grain is very important. So uh, there is the grain tab in Lightroom, which you can use, which uh, in a lot of scenarios I enjoy quite a bit. So obviously there's just the amount and then you can play around with the roughness and then the, the size sliders here. The nice thing about this size one is as you increase it, it does add like a little bit of a blur to the image. Depending on the type of work you're doing, that can be a nice way to take a little bit of the edge off. So this is great, but what I've never enjoyed about this for color is it's just monochromatic and obviously you know color film the the grain that's in uh in that does have some color to it it's not just uh, monochromatic like with black and white so what i found is this free film grain pack i'll put a link below uh, from the company that uh, i downloaded it from and it's just these scans of all these different film stocks the grain uh, against middle gray you can see these color ones have some uh these color films have some color to, to the grain. And then there's some black and white ones as well. So I usually use uh, Portrait 400 and HP5. And then basically all you do is you drag it into Photoshop. So you obviously need Photoshop for this. This is the Portrait 400 one. Um, we'll turn it on. But basically when you drag it in, it's gonna 
look like this and you just change your blend mo mode to overlay. Uh, but as you can see, if we zoom in, so that's with it on and that's off. That's back on. So you can see there is a little bit of color to that, uh, that grain. So I quite like how that looks. And usually what I'll do is I'll go and uh, I'll, I'll add it to my image in Photoshop to like the full res one. And then I'll go and uh, kind of size for web. And then usually I'll go and uh, drag it back in again. I don't know why that's coming in so small right now. These are quite big scans. And then usually I'll go and I'll add another one on to this web size version. So you can see this is like a 2000 pixel wide web size version. And it just, you know, combining it with that halation, again, it's pretty heavy right now, those two layers of grain, it does give this really nice kind of texture to this image that otherwise would have been really, really clean. Okay, so those are pretty much the main tools that I use that I have found like really helpful. Hopefully one or two of them will work for you as well. Like I said, I'll put links below for all of it. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, like I said at the start, you know, what's most important to me, regardless of the medium I'm using, is just if the image on the screen in front of me uh, looks good to my eyes. And often the, the biggest motivator behind the decisions I'm making uh, is just my creative style and my creative preferences. So uh, all these tools though are great little, um, you know, options that can help you get there with your images, bring some character into them and also match them up with your film work. So uh, hope you found this interesting. And uh, other than that, just wanna say as always, thank you for watching, for the support, uh, all that kind of stuff. And I'll talk to you soon.